Every time it comes, it feels like it's been forever. And this time especially, because my 2020 pepper season got a little sideways on me. But now, we're back. And so, uh, I welcome you to episode one of a, an unknown number of parts. Uh, we'll find out. But I'm going to chronicle for you the experience of pepper season. Growing peppers, eating peppers, seeking out chilling enlightenment in all its forms, barbecuing, spending time outside. A uh, little something different than the usual... Uh, spicy review fair uh, getting back to kind of why i was doing this to begin with so uh those aren't going away i'm going to keep making those too but this is a little something different and so I, I welcome you to my favorite time of year it's pepper season So yeah, today we're gonna uh, we're gonna start small. I'm gonna work my way back into the chili pepper world uh, as best I can, and I'm gonna start with what I think is an underrated pepper, and it's one of my all-time favorites, uh, the Serrano. And so I've got a stoplight of, of pepper goodness here for you. We've got uh, one that is uh, maybe even a touch underripe, uh, just this side of green, maybe almost a little yellowy, and we got one that has had time to ripen and mature to this beautiful bright orange, and then we've got one that is. Uh, starting to maybe turn the corner in a bad way, but not yet. We've taken it right to the edge to achieve this beautiful red ripening. And uh, we're not just going to eat them. We're going to smoke them. Ah, yes, my $150 grill. It serves me well. It's never gone wrong. Uh, I have to hammer it back together every time I move it, but that's okay. It's a beautiful grill. And we've got a little bit of coal and wood inside. Uh, we've got a mixture of oak-infused coal and mesquite to capture that Texas flavor that I'm looking for. And we're running right about a little bit on the cool side, actually, about 250, a little better. I like to keep it around 270. Yeah, we've got this beef brisket big old sucker in here uh, to celebrate July 4th, which I'm taking over to my folks' place tomorrow. Uh, well, once it's cooked and stuff, you know. But yeah, we're going to put these serrano peppers right in here. So off we go. Nope. One, two. We're not going to smoke them for a huge amount of time because uh, I don't want to overpower the serrano goodness with, with bitterness. But we probably are going to do them for a good 20, 30 minutes. So I'm just going to close the lid and let this thing do its magic. And actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit of wood too. And then I think while that's cooking, uh, you got 20, 30 minutes, well, let's check out some pepper plants. You can take a look at the garden for the first time. What a sight. I love little happy pepper plants. This is a guy that's getting big, even though he's kind of got a weird curvature to him. This is my uh, red stab and a habanero. But yeah, I always wanted to try one of these. So I'm super stoked to have some fresh pods pretty soon. This here is a yellow Trinidad scorpion. And it's another strong looking one. These, these, these more tropical pods are really, really happy in this weather in Texas right now this year. And then down here, right here, this is my Orozco chili, which I know almost nothing about. I think it was a substitution because they were out of something I wanted at the store. Uh, where I ordered my seedlings. But uh, yeah, so we're going to find out all about that pepper. This one, <laughs> back in my mind, I was kind of hoping it would die, but it seems like it's going to be okay. This is a uh, yellow seven pot primo. So I already had one bad experience. Uh, this is the grave of my sugar rush peach. Uh, it just didn't, didn't happen. Moving on, there's my bear. No, um, depth perception on an iPhone camera is difficult. Yeah, so right here we've got my Bootjalokia peach, which I'm super happy to try. I've always wanted to try a peach pod, and I haven't yet. Over here we've got a Tabasco plant. It's a little tiny one, a little runt, but hopefully he'll come around because I really want some fresh Tabasco peppers to make sauce with. Moving on, this is the Roman numeral XVIII chili, 18. I don't know what it is. Uh, I saw the name, and it was weird. I had a couple of spots left in my, my order, so I just put it on there. Now we get into the ones where I really, really, really want these to pan out more than any other. I mean, I want them all to be nice, big, healthy plants. But these, this is a tr just a straight up seven pot. I've always wanted one of these. And so look at it. It's getting enormous. It loves this weather. It's been so humid here. This is a red bootla. It's got a different shape. It's kind of tree-like. It's going to be a pretty, pretty plant, I think. 
but yeah, I mean, interested to try a red bootla and it's hopefully not going to intermingle too much with my seven pot. And the one that this is the one I want most of all, I've always wanted to eat a fresh fatale and I promised myself that when I did, it would be one I grew myself. And this is a happy, strong fatale plant that, uh, I have a lot of high hopes for. So yeah, but yeah, all in all, uh, pretty satisfied with the chili lineup for, uh, 2021. I gotta say best of luck to me. It's been a bit of time and it's time to check on our peppers. They're probably about ready to take a sample of. I don't want to like smoke them so much they turn bitter and dried out and gross. I just want to give them like an infusion of smokiness. Uh, yeah, let's check them out. <laughs> Sitting pretty around 250 still. A little under, it's fine. There they are. Look at them, look at that brisket. Yeah, look at these guys now. <laughs> this poor green is looking a little worse for wear. But yeah, we're just gonna pull all these guys off. Ow. Onto the board. Close this thing up so it can continue to cook. Good brisket. All right, so we've got, uh, we've got green, yellow, and red, uh, or green, orange, and red smoked Serrano's, and we're gonna try them out. This is, I think, the first smoked pepper tasting on Chili Chun ever. Uh, so it's a momentous occasion for pepper season. But yeah, we'll start with the green. Uh, I think we're probably gonna end up working our way up in terms of heat, because the riper, you know, the hotter and whatnot. There's just so many flies out here right now, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, please observe. Look at this beautiful pie, it's got little grill marks on it, the smoke billowing behind my head. Looking fantastic. It's still pretty hot to the touch. It's kind of soft. It's taking on a nice, uh, very, very, deliciously chewable texture and we're just gonna break off I'm gonna cut the ends a bit burnt let's take a chunk out the middle there we go so yeah we've got just a beautiful hunk of it's all it's all juicy on the inside the oils are rendered out uh, it has a great aroma it's like a grassy grassiness from the serrano you know normally but then the mesquite and the oak just add like a whole other kind of depth to it Cheers, you do. Mm, ant. Bye. It, 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 the texture is a bit like a green bean. It's perfectly cooked. And the flavor, it's that grassy, kind of piney flavor you get with Serrano. But then, like the texture, the texture is my favorite part. It's just, it's like so, it's got a snap on the outside, but it's it's nice and soft in the middle. And the heat, like, it, it comes on a lot slower. It kind of, it helps round it out, I think, having the smoking process. And so you get like this really nice, very subtle creeping mouth burn back of my throat a tiny bit. Like, it's not a lot. It's just enough to give you this like delicious, uh, aliveness in your mouth i dig it yeah so now and we must find out about the, the orange this one you see it dried out a little bit more it's starting to look more like your traditional smoked pod and uh same again i'm going to take off the end and i'm going to take a chunk out of the middle there Ooh. okay now ooh, that smells hotter yeah now so, so now we're looking at uh like this kind of UT uh, longhorn orange color. And you got a little bit, a couple visible seeds. Some, the oil is all rendered out, so it's, it's all shiny on the inside. And the aroma, like, other than smelling hotter, like it's got a, a, a more of a sweetness, more of a fruitiness to it as the ripening process has is, is, is done its job. Cheers. Yeah. Mmm. There we go. All right, starting to get alive now. This one, I mean, you could just throw some salt on there and, and eat it and it would be super delicious. But the idea of integrating this into some kind of like a mayo dressing for something would be exceptional. I think this would go, <laughs> I think it would go really well with potato uh, in like a hash. I think that would be great. I think it'd be good in an enchilada sauce. It's got more, a more interesting taste than the pure green. It starts to develop this, this not fruity, but like slightly sweeter, 
more welcoming flavor. And the heat is much, much, much more pronounced. Granted, I, I'm eating them back to back, so it's going to build up a little bit. But the back of my throat, like, a pretty pronounced, pretty vicious burning sensation back there. And it's really just the back of my throat. Like, I don't know if I, I got a piece stuck back there or something, but it's, like, torturing the back of my throat. Um, this is our... <laughs> This is already like, I'm sitting about a seven, you know, and I'm, I'm only, I'm only climbing. I'm getting the vapors a little bit. You, know, you start to get this like kind of hot sensation under your eyes. It makes your eyes tear up. It's super delicious, but getting very hot. Very, very hot. Man, I've got a long road to climb, don't I? Um, or hill to climb, road to hoe, whatever. Um, to get back on the pepper game. This is hot as hell. Hmm. Uh, well, on to the third. And I'm going to save these because we're going to do something cool with them, hopefully. Um, oh, I'm on fire. Yeah, the beer just makes it worse. Dang. Oh, we're back here. It's been so long since I've been properly into pepper season. Let's go. Whew. All right. The red one, you see, it's almost deflated. Um, not, it's not much uh, structure to it anymore. It's just all soft and mushy on the inside. But it's got this real pretty, like, terracotta color. Ah. Oh. Whoa. Serrano's build and build and build. It seems like forever. They just take their sweet time and build. Um, this one's no different. God dang. All right. Take the tip away. Chunk out the middle. Yeah. So now, see, it's, it's, it's almost just like a paste on the... On the inside of the pot. And... Oh, dude, what? That smells exceptional. It's, it's sweet and roasty. Almost like a... <laughs> Almost like a red bell pepper. Oh, this is... Dude, I, I wish... I wish I could share this particular aroma with you because the, the, the smoke was at a really nice temperature, so it's really clean. And it's just this nice mesquite hit that goes with the Serato. Oh, man... I'm easily eight and a half creeping up on a nine right now. It's been so long since I've really dived into fresh pods. I missed it. This is good. Chili enlightenment. Here we come. Cheers, YouTube. Uh, that is very tasty. The sweetness is even more developed. And the smoke really, really got this one good. It has like a much more pronounced smokiness. I don't know how, you know how that is, unless it's just a better flavor pairing maybe. But this one, so good. And good and hot. Oh, oh. <clears throat> but the aroma, there's something about that like brushy grassiness of Serrano. And then that sweet ripening process. And then the, I find mesquite smoke to be a little bit tangy almost, like... I know it's smoke, but it does have a tang to it for me. That that Trinity it makes an exceptional flavor combination. It's real hot. Um, man, it flies, man. I don't think I'm gonna get to like pacing around crying or anything, but oh, this is properly hot. And you know, thinking back, I just recorded the last dab Apollo review yesterday. Um, I really think that <laughs> this is probably. Uh, <clears throat> Every bit is hot, if not hotter, this experience I've just had. And it's such an interesting tasting experience. It's so good. And it gives you so much to think about and so much for your tongue to do. Um, tasting the sweetness in these pods, the, the, the natural flavors. And uh, yeah, we're, we should incorporate these into something. We have to figure out something smart to do with these. There's plenty left. And they have a great taste. And I think if you mix them together, you'll get something really legit hot as well. Let's ponder that for a moment. I have the makings of a simple snack. Um, I wanted to maximize this experience, so I'm gonna take a bit of each. About the same amount I had before, I think. But all three of them together. I'm gonna make a little, a little nacho. So I'm gonna place these just on a chip. I've got a couple of key ingredients. I've got some handmade mozzarella. Uh, 
I know it's not a traditional nacho ingredient, but it's it's just this right combination of salty and creamy and, and very mild to kind of balance things out. I've got some uh, sprigs of cilantro in place just there. I've got a uh, clove of garlic. I'm not going to use the whole thing, but I am actually going to take a couple of little slices of raw garlic and just put them on top. And then, last but not least, I've got some cotija cheese to give like a pungent kind of bite to it uh, to go with the mozzarella. And I'm just placing everything together there. Fly on my beer. Get off now. Um, yeah. And so I've got this beautiful morsel. I, I didn't have any lime, but I wouldn't be opposed to putting some lime on here either. Uh, smoked Serrano three ways. Handmade mozzarella, cotija cheese, a couple of pieces of fresh garlic, and cilantro leaves. What more could you ask for out of your pepper season, man? Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's absolutely delicious. The two cheeses give it a nice saltiness. I brought it up for two. The cilantro gives it this cool, fresh, like, overtone. The garlic kind of cuts through everything with an aromatic. That's exceptional. <clears throat> oh. It actually balances the heat pretty well, too. Like, it's still hot. Don't get me wrong, but not nearly as hot. It adds a, get off my food. It adds a lot of context to it. It makes it a lot more interesting to eat. Mmm. I'm the world's happiest human being. I mean, maybe not, but I'm definitely in the top 10. Mm. Oh, and it, it just tamed the heat so perfectly. Like, I'm barely even feeling a burn beyond my comfort zone. It just gives me this nice warmth, beautiful Serrano flavor, lots of accoutrements, nice crunch. I can eat 50 of those. It's super delicious. Oh, and then the creeping heat comes actually after the fact. It's pretty warm. Ah, <sighs> but man, what a flavor. Long story short, if you got some extra pods sitting around, A, if you got green pods in your house and you're like, oh, they're going bad soon. No, just keep them dry. You know, keep them somewhere dry and cool. And they'll ripen. You know, jalapenos will do it. Serranos will do it. Any green pod. Poblanos. They won't last forever, but they'll, they'll last a lot longer than you think. And they'll get a much more... Oh. <laughs> you get a much more amazing depth of flavor out of them if you let them ripen a bit. Uh, and then if you happen to be barbecuing, you know, you happen to have some smoke on, just throw a couple on there because uh, it gives you this nice texture and this, this really cool tasting experience that you wouldn't get otherwise. Um, I hope this has been an informative uh, initial uh, inaugural run of, of my new favorite show, Pepper Season. And uh, yeah, stick around next time. We're going to dive into another pod and explore it in a different level of detail. Um, seeing now as I don't have any fresh ones yet from the garden, I bet you the next one, episode two, will be the habanero. So you should check that out. We're also going to keep doing our normal spicy reviews and stuff, so don't worry. Um, this is just a nice little side project. I really wanted to make something out of pepper season this year because I freaking love it. And I didn't really get a chance to indulge last year, so we're going to do it hard this year. So please join me. Click subscribe, click like, click, click the bell if you enjoy this kind of thing. You know, uh, I appreciate it, and uh, I love you. I hope you have a great 4th of July, and I will catch you very soon on pepper season on chili time. <laughs>